Mrs. X has developed Stevens Johnson syndrome whilst on carbamazepine. She is now being transferred from the ITU to a bay in a medicine ward. Which patients can Mrs. X share a bay with? A. A patient with MRSA B. A patient with diarrhea C. A patient with fever of unknown origin D. A patient with Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Q2. Mr. Smith has been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 20 years ago. Due to impaired mobility, he has developed a grade for pressure sore on his sacrum. Which health professional can provide you prescriptions for his dressing? A. Dietitian B. Tissue viability nurse C. Social worker D. Physiotherapist Q3 Sharp debridement may cause trauma to underlying structures. The procedure should only be carried out by A. A healthcare assistant on working full-time B. A qualified nurse with at least three years experience C. A doctor of any type of speciality D. A qualified healthcare professional with appropriate training. Q4. Margaret has been diagnosed with hepatic adenoma. Her results are as follows. Benign tumor as shown on triphasic CT scan and alpha fetoproteins within normal range. She is asymptomatic and does not appear jaundice, but she appears to be very anxious. As a nurse, what will you initially do? A. Sit down with Margaret and discuss about her fears. Use therapeutic communication to alleviate anxiety. B. Refer her to a psychiatrist for treatment. C. Discuss invasive procedure with patient and show her videos of the operation. D. Take her to the surgeon's clinic and discuss about consent for invasive procedure. Q5. You are dispending morphine sulfate in the treatment room, which has been witnessed by another qualified nurse. Your patient refuses the medication when offered. What will you do next? A. Go back to the treatment room and write a line across your documentation on the CD book. Sign it as refused. B. Dispose the medication using the denaturing kit. Document as refused and disposed on the Mars and write it on the nurse's notes. C. Dispose the medication and document it on the patient's care plan. D. Store the medication in the CD pod for an hour, and then ask your patient again if he, she wants to take his medication. Q6. As the nurse on duty, you have noted that there has been an increasing number of cases of pressure sword in your nursing home. Which of the following is the best intervention? A. Collaboration with the multidisciplinary turn. B. Patient advocacy. C. Reduce fragmentation and costs. D. Identify opportunities and develop policies to improve nursing practice. Q7. One of your residents has been transferred from the hospital to your nursing home after having been admitted for a week due to a chest infection. On transfer, you have noted that he had several dressings on his thighs, which he has not heard before. What should you do? A. If the dressings are intact, Document it on the nursing notes and indicate that the dressings need to be changed after 48 hours. B. Change the dressings if they look soiled and document this on the wound assessment form. C. Remove the dressings whether they are intact or not. Assess the wounds. Document this on the wound assessment form and redress the wounds. D. All of the above. Q8. 
Mrs. X has been ordered 100 milliliters to be infused over 45 minutes via a 20 drops ml giving set. What drip rate should be set? A. 50 drops per minute. B. 44 drops per minute. C. 41 drops per minute. D. 52 drops per minute. Q9. Mrs. X informs the nurse that she has lost her job due to excessive absences related to her wound. Two correct answers. The nurse should a. Encourage the patient to express her feelings about the job loss. b. Contact social services to assist the patient with accessing available resources. c. Evaluate Mrs. X's understanding of her wound management. d. Explain to Mrs. X that she can no longer be seen at the clinic without a job. Q10. Mrs. X has been admitted in the hospital due to edema of her thighs. One of her medications was furosemide 40 mg tablets to be administered once daily. What should be done prior to administering furosemide? A. Check patient's blood pressure and withhold furosemide if it is low. B. Check patient's pupils and withhold furosemide if it is constricted. C. Swab your patient's wound and send the sample to pathology. D. Assess each of your patient's thighs by measuring its girth. Q11. You have answered a phone call after receiving handover. The person you were talking to has explained that he needs to find out about his sister's condition. What should you initially do? A. Discuss about his sister's condition and provide treatment options such as access to other resources in the community. B. Check the patient's record and verify the caller's identity. C. Refuse to divulge any information to the caller. D. Discuss about his sister's condition and book an appointment for him to attend care plan reviews. Q12. A patient has been prescribed Illinois of a saline solution. The rate is set at 150 milliliters per hour. How long will the infusion take? A. 5 hours and 20 minutes. B. 4 hours and 40 minutes. C. 6 hours and 10 minutes. D. 6 hours and 36 minutes. Q13. External factors which increase the risk of pressure damage are A. Equipment, age and pressure. B. Moisture, pressure and diabetes. C. Pressure, shear and friction. D. Pressure, moisture, and age. Q14. A resident is due for discharge from your nursing home. You have been his key worker for the last five years, and his family has been appreciative of the care you have provided. One of the relatives has offered you cash in an envelope after saying goodbye. What should you do? A. Say thank you but refuse the offer politely. B. Say thank you and accept the offer. C. Accept the offer and share it to your colleagues. D. Accept the offer and keep it to yourself. Q15. A patient who has had Parkinson's disease for seven years has been experiencing aphasia. Which health professional should you make a referral to with regards to his aphasia? A. Occupational therapist. B. Community matron. C. Psychiatrist. D. Speech and language therapist. Q16. Fiona, 70 years old, has recently been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. 
You have devised a care plan to meet her nutritional needs. However, you have noted that she has poorly fitting dentures. Which of the following is the least likely risk to the service user? A. Malnutrition B. Hyperglycemia C. Dehydration D. Hyperglycemia Q17 Mr. Smith has just been certified dead by the general practitioner. However, no arrangements have been made by the family. What should you do first? A. Check patient's records for the next of kin details and contact them to discuss about funeral services. B. Ring the cooperative and arrange for the undertaker to pick up Mr. Smith as soon as possible. C. Contact the GP and discuss about how to deal with Mr. Smith. D. Contact your manager and inquire about dealing with Mr. Smith. Q18. During your medical rounds, you have noted that Mrs. X was upset. She has verbalized that she misses her family very much, and that no one has been to visit lately. What would likely be your initial intervention? A. Contact Mrs. X's family and encourage them to visit her during the weekend. B. Sit next to Mrs. X and listen attentively. Allow her to talk about things that cause her anxiety. C. Collaborate with the GP for a care plan review and request for antidepressants to be prescribed. D. All of the above. E. None of the above. Q19. After having done your medication rounds, you have realized that your patient has experienced the adverse effect of the drug. What will be your initial intervention? A. You must do the physical observations and notify the general practitioner. B. You must ring the general practitioner and request for a home visit. C. You must administer medication from the homey remedy pod after having spoken to the general practitioner. D. You must observe your patient until the general practitioner arrives at your nursing home. Q20. On admission of a service user, you have done an informal risk assessment for pressure sores, and you have noted that the patient is currently not at risk. What will be your next step? A. Include the repositioning chart on your patient's daily notes, and instruct your carers HCAs to turn your patient every two hours. B. Alert the general practitioner about your patient's condition. C. Reassess your patient on a regular basis and document your observations. D. Modify your patient's diet to maintain intact skin integrity. Q21. You are on the phone with a family member, and one of the carers has reported that one of your residents has stopped breathing and turned blue. What should you do first? A. End your conversation with the family member, attend to your patient and do the CPR. B. End your conversation with the family member, go to your patient's bedroom and assess for airway, breathing, and circulation. C. End your conversation with the family member, and dial 999 to request for an ambulance. D. Dial 111 and request for an urgent visit from the general practitioner. Q22. A carer has reported that she has seen a resident fall off his bed. What initial assessment should be done? A. Check the patient's early warning score along with the Glasgow Coma Scale immediately. B. Ask the patient if he is in pain, if so, administer painkillers immediately. C. Dial 999 and request for an ambulance to take your patient to the hospital. D. 
Contact the Out of Hours GP and request for a home visit.